It is our noontime prayer, and welcome, because we're getting ready to pray together. It's one of my favorite things to do of the week, is pray with people who I know are going after it and loving prayer. I mean, I don't know, some of you are like, I don't necessarily know if I like, I'm, like prayer or whatever. I'm telling you, when we pray, if you, it depends on who you're praying to. If you're praying to a statue, not going to go so well. <laughs> but if you are praying to the living God, prayer goes well because he hears us. That's what we're excited about. So I'm glad that we are, have an opportunity, excited that we have an opportunity to pray together. I'm telling you, when we pray, I love the fact that like, we join together. It's a freedom for us to be able to do that. And here's what the Bible says, that the fervent, wax hot, that word means to wax hot, fervent, effectual prayers of a righteous man a woman avails much. So when we pray, it avails much. A lot of things happen when we pray. And so that's why we pray according to his will. And we pray to a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us, his Holy Spirit. And it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives in us and quickens our mortal body. Isn't that good news? That is good news. Some of you can't answer me, but it's okay. It's good news. And I want to pray with you. Today we're going to be uh, just thanking the Lord about his kingdom. One of our models, one of the things that we do here at the church, and you need to know this if you're a part of Sojourn, maybe not a part of Sojourn, but this church is about this. We are trying to reach as many people as we can with the gospel message of the kingdom, and we want those people those people that we reach with the gospel message of the kingdom to grow up and be disciples of Jesus and be like Christ. That's our desire. That's what we want to do. But it's his kingdom, not ours, his kingdom, and it's his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to be praying those things today. So pray with me. Um, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to pray together. I love the scripture in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to, to bring good news to the poor. That's the gospel message to, to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives, and the opening of <laughs> opening the prison to those who are bound, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom, you've ushered in your kingdom to us, and that you brought good news, the good news of the gospel, uh, the, so, so that those that can hear it. I'm praying, Lord, right now that those that even if their ears are closed to the gospel they'd be opened in Jesus name open deaf ears physically and spiritually open blind eyes spiritually and physically open closed hearts and damaged hearts physically and spiritually Lord that's what I'm asking you to do because it's your kingdom the kingdom of God and we know this so your word says this that's why I love praying the word it says the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God because it's your kingdom Thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, thine is the glory forever. And so, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that we pray your will be done. Again, not ours, but yours be done, Lord, in our families. I'm praying this over you right now. Your family, your marriage, uh, the kingdom of God come, will of God be done in your finances, over your children. I'm praying kingdom of God come, will of God be done over our church, over Sojourn Church, over the church that you're building because your word says that you are building your church. You are the master builder. And the gates of hell, they're not going to prevail against the church. They can't because you are establishing it and it's being built upon you, Jesus. We grow up into the head, which is Christ. Oh, I love praying that because I didn't write it. You did. And you're a great writer. And we thank you, Lord, that the word of God will not pass away. I thank you, Lord, that your word is forever settled in heaven. And Lord, as we pray, your kingdom come and your will be done over this region, Lord, over our communities, Lord, over our families, again, over, um, Lord, our city. We pray the kingdom of God, will of God be done over our state, kingdom of God come, will of God be done over our nation and all over the world as we proclaim, shout out, proclaim, preach the message, the gospel message of the kingdom. And we can't do it without your spirit. That's why the scripture said that we just read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's upon us to preach that gospel, to preach that good news to the poor, those that need to hear that message. Oh, Lord, what a great time for the church to be, to be alive. What, what a great time for the bride of Christ to come to know who she is. What an amazing time for the church to arise and proclaim that gospel message of the kingdom. Your kingdom. I'm, I should say that. I love that. It's not necessarily a word that we say all the time, but it's your kingdom, the kingdom of God, Lord, that we preach and that we, that we proclaim. And we thank you, Lord, that you're doing it through us in Jesus' name. 
Amen, amen. We're going to continue to pray from that verse out of Isaiah, verse uh, chapter 61, verse uh, down to verse 3, uh, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, uh, in verse 1, and He's anointed me. In verse 3, it says, To comfort all who mourn. And so we are just so thankful today how, God, you just bring comfort to us in the midst of of our sadness, Lord God, that your word says that you turn our mourning into dancing. And uh, we are just so grateful today, God. That's, That's the goodness of God. That's the gospel of the kingdom. The good news is that the kingdom of God has come. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy. And we thank you in the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you today Father God, for turning our lives around. If it wasn't for you, Jesus, but God. I know we all have a but God in our lives where we were headed down one direction or we were going down this path, lost, uh, didn't know, didn't have purpose, didn't have vision for our lives. But we are thankful today, God, that you have, your kingdom has come, that Jesus, you have rescued us, you've saved us, you've healed us, and you've delivered us, and that you're working in us, Lord, as we walk out this salvation, as we grow. Father God, as, as Pastor Chris just said, that we are growing every day in every way into the fullness of who we are in Christ Jesus, that we want to be mature believers, Father God, that that's what your Spirit is doing. It also says in that verse that you give beauty for ashes, and so we think thank you today. We thank you for the ashes in our lives, Lord. There are areas in our lives that we look at or hey, they look like there's no hope, man. It looks like it's just desolate. What can, what can we do with that area of our life? But we thank you, God, that you are breathing, that you make beauty out of our ashes. And so we bring our ashes to you today. We bring them to you today and say, God, let your, have your way. Let your kingdom come in my ashes, Father God. Let my ashes be a testimony of your goodness. Let my ashes ashes be a testimony of the power of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And we just prophesy that over you. We declare that over our family, over our community here at Sojourn Church. We declare that over you right now, that God is making beauty out of the ashes. What the enemy meant for evil, thank God he has turned it and he is using it for good. He is using it for for his glory. That is a testimony of God's power of God's love, of God's grace, and we're thankful for that. And it says here that he'll give the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Father, we just thank you for the joy of the Lord today. We thank you for the oil of gladness. We just pray for release of the joy of the Lord in your life right now, in your relationships. We declare it over our church right here at Sojourn. We declare it over the body of Christ today. We just declare the joy of the Lord right now. Supernatural release of joy, of joy, of joy. Where there has been sorrow, where there has been disappointment, where there has been discouragement today, we declare the joy of the Lord, that there be a supernatural release of his joy that's inside of you in Jesus would just begin to overflow, that it begin to overflow, that your emotions would line up with his word. And it says that his joy, we have his joy. We thank you that that joy is not dependent on our circumstances. That joy is not dependent on our bank accounts. That joy is not dependent on anything in the natural, Father God. That joy comes from you. We look deep today. We're looking deep today. We're looking beyond anything that we could see, God. And we're looking to the joy of the Lord, that well of joy that you have deposited inside of us in Jesus Christ. And we are so thankful for that. And it goes on to say that that you've given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lord, we just praise you today. We put on that garment of praise today. We make a decision. We make a choice that we're not going to sit down. We're not going to sit in the corner. We're not going to just hide. We're not going to let disappointment and discouragement keep us down. But we're going to put on the garment of praise. And we're going to praise our God. We're going to praise our Father. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. And we're going to thank you, God, today that you. we're going to praise you because you're worthy of all the praise, Dad. We praise you for who you are. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. You're the beginning and the end and everything in between. In you, we live, we move, and have our very being. And so we thank you today, God, that we have victory today. We put on that garment of praise, and we say we're going to wear it every day, Lord, by grace. We're going to put that thing on. We're not going to pick up the garment of discouragement. We're not going to pick up the garment of depression. No, we're not going to pick up the garment of defeat. We're going to pick up the garment of praise. And we're going to praise our Father. As David said, I will bless 
the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually reign in our hearts and our mouths in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for that joy. It's hard to come up here and not feel a little bit of joy just in the trail of that. So, Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you that through Jesus, we can rebuild the ruins of our current world. Isaiah 61.4 says, They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. And Lord, I thank you so much that you are a God that redeems. I thank you that you are a God who helps us to buy back the years that the locusts have eaten. I thank you, Lord, that, that you can look at a moment, sweep your arm across it, and all of the mistakes that we've made in our past can suddenly disappear. And I thank you, Lord, for that because we have made mistakes in our past. We have gone from a, a country that, that looks to you to a country that looks to ourselves. And so, Lord, I, I just, I thank you so much that in redemption, that in repentance on our part, you can redeem that past. You can, you can set things right again. You can make us the restorers of the breach. And we can actually be able to rebuild our country based on godly values as long as we choose to look to you instead of look to ourselves to do that. And Lord, I thank you that we can redeem our lives our personal lives, my personal life, I can look to you for redemption. I can look to you to wipe away the, the idiotic mistakes I've made and that people all around me can do the same thing. And then on a corporate level, we as a church can do that. And, on, and we as a community can do that. We as a state can do that. And we as a country can do that. And thank you, Lord, that you are that good of a redeemer, that you can redeem it all. You can bring it all back because you are the Lord. You are capable. You are more than capable of doing those things. And Lord, I also thank you that, that in doing that, we can redeem our nation, that we can redeem our culture. We can redeem the voices that are in our culture right now that, that speak of, of our own ability to create whatever reality we want to create. I mean, how silly is that? If you just even think about that, if we just even apply our own limited logic to that, it doesn't make sense. And yet we're walking along right now as if it can really happen. And Lord, I thank you so much that you are so much wiser than we are. I thank you that you are so much more patient than we are. I thank you that you are not a mere man, that you are God, and you are capable of doing so much more and so much greater than we can do. And that is in itself something that we should repent over right there. You could squash us like a bug if you felt like it, but you don't. You love us. And so instead, you lift us up out of our own ashes. You, you pull us out of the muck that we have created, and you redeem us, Lord. And I thank you so much for that. And now that we are aware of how we can be redeemed, I also pray that we as a church and we as, a, as individuals can be that light in our culture to shine on the on the silliness of the things that we currently believe in and the things that we're doing. Lord, thank you so much that you are showing us this and help us to show others. Speak through us and help us to have the courage to speak out when the time is there to speak out. Through your Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray for wisdom of who to speak to, when to speak, so that we can re relay that intelligence. We can relay that that light, we can relay that knowledge and that, and that wisdom to people who will actually be able to accept it. And Lord, I pray for you to go ahead of us and, and prepare their hearts so that when we are ready to speak, there will be people there to be able to listen. It's like Jesus said when he was speaking to the multitudes, when he said, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And I just pray that right now for those who are waiting to hear, those who don't even know it, but who are, who are slated to hear. Lord, prepare their hearts, prepare them. And Lord, I thank you that by living according to the laws that you've established, we can find prosperity so that we can again be a blessing to the world. Lord, the United States has been a blessing to the world for years by giving foreign aid, by the missions that we, uh, that we sponsor, the different churches that send people all over the world doing good, uh, raising awareness of you, Lord, and bringing your light into darkest corners of the world. And, and uh, people that serve, people that love even when they're met with, with violence, people who serve even when they're met with unkindness, when they're met with harsh words, when they're, when they're put in prison for your sake, Lord. People who are martyred because of you. Those 
a lot of those people came from the United States. And Lord, we don't want that to quit. We want to be able to still be your servants and be a proud part and a partner of what you're doing in this world. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Isaiah 61 goes on to say that instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Father, we just thank you today, God, for the work that you have done. Thank you for that we are restored, uh, Lord, through Jesus, through the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we receive double today, Lord. We just declare that today. Thank you for double for our trouble. Thank you that you've taken away our shame, that there's no guilt, there's no condemnation, there are no, there's no shame to those who are in Christ Jesus. We thank you today that we are forgiven, that the blood of Jesus has washed us clean. God, that Jesus, you died once and for all, for all sin. And you not only forgave our sin, but you even forgave us the guilt of our sin. So we are so thankful today, God, that you've delivered us from shame and that we receive double. We receive double, God, that you have crowned us with glory and honor, that we receive the glory of your son, Jesus Christ, that we are, you have elevated us, that we're seated in heavenly places. What an incredible honor. We are so humbled, God, that you extended your grace and your mercy and your love to us. Father God, that Jesus became our sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. And so we declare today that Jesus you're our righteousness. We look to you for what qualifies us. You're the one that's restored us. You're the one that has healed us. We thank you today that we are healed. We thank you today for the work of restoration that is manifesting. We declare that right now. I believe the Lord is doing a work of restoration. We come in agreement right now. We thank you that the word does not return void, that his word does not return void. But that word, there have been words that you have been standing on. There have been words that we've been believing right here at so in church and that word there have been prophetic words there have been prayers and so we thank you today God that your word will not return for me, but it's bringing restoration it's bringing healing right now in the name of Jesus and it says it goes on to say that instead of dishonor that they shall rejoice in their lot and, and therefore in their land they shall possess a double portion. Father, we thank you, God, that you've called us, Lord God, to be possessors of the promises of God. Just like the covenant you made with Abraham and you elevated him and you said he shall possess the land. Just like the children of Israel, Lord, you called us to walk in dominion. We talked about this yesterday, the message that was preached here yesterday uh, morning about walking in dominion, the kingdom mandate, God, that you've anointed us, that you've appointed us, you've given us your kingdom Lord God. You've given us your power. You have given us your authority to walk in dominion. So we thank you for the grace today, Lord. We thank you for the grace, Lord, to walk in dominion. Lord, not as the world does. Jesus, you said, you know, that you've given us authority, not as man gives, not to lord over other people, but to serve. God, to serve. And so, Lord, we humble ourselves. Jesus, you made yourself of no reputa reputation. The Bible says that you emptied yourself and you became a man, and you served. You were the ultimate example of what it means, Lord. Even, even as you washed the disciples' feet, and you set the example that we are to love one another, that you said that they'll know that you're my disciples. They'll know that we are true followers of Jesus Christ because of the love that you have for one another. So God, we pray today, we pray that there would be a, a revelation. We pray that there would be a demonstration of the love of God in our hearts. There would be an explosion today. We pray that there'd be an explosion through a revelation of the love of God that we might be filled today with the fullness of God. Lord, Lord help us stretch our, stretch our capacity today to be able to receive the love of God. Enlarge our hearts. Enlarge our capacity today to be able to receive your love, Father God. Help us, Lord, to focus and to meditate on the truth of your love, Lord God. Help us to take, take our eyes off of the distractions. Help us, God. Thank you for the grace to forgive those that offend us, Lord God, that we would guard our hearts because out of our hearts flows the very issues of life, Lord God. So help us to guard our hearts, to protect our hearts, and let our hearts be rich soil that the Word of God can be planted in. Let our hearts, Father God, be so 
fertile. Let our hearts be overflowing with love for one another. God, that Lord, the word says that love covers a multitude of sins and that love never fails and that God, you are love. And so we yield to you. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit. We abide in you, Jesus. And we just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that as we abide in you, that all things are possible. And it's not, and it's Jesus, it's you that lives in us and through us and touches the world and enables us to go out and be the church to the unchurched. Thank you, Lord, for our children's future. Lord, I just, in 61.9 of Isaiah, it says, their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the offspring that the Lord has blessed. And Lord, I thank you so much for that promise. I thank you for the fact that if we are faithful, if we are good in our job in restoring biblical values in this country, if we are good at restoring men of character and women of character in, in our government, if we, are, if we are faithful in sticking with you and speaking what you tell us to say, when you tell us to say it, and standing up at the times that you tell us to do that, Lord, that our, our children can benefit from that. And Lord, I, uh, I thank you so much for families. I thank you for the family. The, the family unit is how you chose in the Bible to be able to, to bless people. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the fact that, that you blessed the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you, that you blessed the nation of Israel through the things that they did, the promises that they made with you, the covenants that they made, and that the way that they acted, the decisions they made in their lifetime cascaded down through generations. Blessings were released because of things that they did. And I thank you, Lord, that those same blessings can be cascaded down by things that we do. And Lord, what a great promise. What a wonderful promise that you give us that we can be blessings to our own children and our children's children. And we can set up blessings that will go multiple generations down the line. But at the same time, Lord, we have to, to fight off the things that are going on right now around us. Attacks by the government and by uh, other people that would tear apart the family, that would, that would take the uh, strength of the family apart, that would dissect us in such ways that parents couldn't control how their children are raised, how their children are educated, or what decisions that they can make, even regarding their own gender, which is a God-given thing. So Lord, I just, I pray for protection for the family. I pray for protection for biblical values in the family unit and surrounding the family unit. And I thank you that, that if we stay faithful to you, if we repent from what we're doing and if we, if we do not continue to follow what culture is trying to do to us, that you have stored up blessings for those who come after us. And we, we pray for that now. We pray for that to be guaranteed, Lord, because we pray for our faithfulness as we step up and we do the things that we're supposed to do to be able to, to follow you, Lord. And we thank you for that ability. And that we can know that our descendants will be known by you. Lord, if we raise our children, it, it says in the Bible, if you raise up a child in the way he should go, he will not depart from it. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that in doing that, that one thing, if we can just raise our children with, with biblical values as they're young, they will know and they'll get to meet you. They'll have a relationship with you. And how, how on earth, once someone has a relationship with you, Lord, how on earth can they depart from that? You have told us, in your Bible, you said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You have gone over and over and over throughout the history of the Israelites and the history of the church. You have gone over and over to, to come to wherever we are in our own, in our own fallen world, in our own uh, rebellion. You have come to us each time with the opportunity to be redeemed, with the opportunity to repent. And how can someone who's already gotten to, to have relationship with you not do that? How could we not come back to a loving Father and a loving God? And I thank you so much for that, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you also that, that by standing up, by having faith, by repenting, that we can prevent our future generations from being blocked of blessings. You said in, you said in the Bible, Lord, that, that uh, 
you would visit the sins of the fathers upon the children and on the children's children to the third and fourth generation, but that you bless thousands. And so, Lord, I, I thank you that you choose to bless more than you choose to curse. And I, I thank you, Lord, that by following your leadership, and we have the Holy Spirit inside us, so this isn't a, this isn't a, a daunting task. We listen to the Holy Spirit, and we can unlock blessings for our kids and our, and our future generations and help us to have that mindset, Lord, that we're not just living for us. We're living for, for generations, for children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Well, here is what Isaiah 61, 11 says, is for as the earth brings forth its sprouts and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. That's a great scripture because all those things, you've seen things sprout up, but he said he'll cause, he'll cause these praise to sprout up and righteousness. You know, the Bible says that that's, the righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It's one of the first scriptures that, I, that was in our the, the uh, New Testament that they gave out at, our, at the schools. The Gideons would give out these little New Testaments, and that, that was right there in the beginning of, of that Bible. And I'm telling you what, righteousness needs to spring up from the ground. Uh, praise and worship needs to spring up from the ground. Faith needs to spring up from the ground. Matter of fact, the Bible says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your plans, the plans that you have will not be thwarted. Your plans, Lord, will not fail. Lord, you have, you have good plans. Your word says that I know the plans that I have for you, says Lord, that give you a future, give you a hope, Lord, and we choose to receive that future, your future, your, the hope that we have in you. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have that for us. Thank you, Lord, that nothing, no one can stop your righteousness from coming. And Lord, we know this, that, that we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. How can we say that? Because I'm not righteous. The Bible says there's not one righteous, not one, but you have made us righteous through your blood. So I'm thankful, Lord, that you're causing, uh, Lord, your bride to be a spotless bride. Lord, you're causing her to be without spot or wrinkle, Lord, because you have made us this way through your blood. So we're thankful, Lord, for that. And we thank you, Lord, that that the, what has been sowed, Lord, the sowing that's, that has gone on, and the reaping will not be ignored, Lord, by the wicked, because your, your word says that there's two that are growing up. There, there's The wheat and the tares are growing up simultaneously, and so we thank you, Lord, that the, the wheat, Lord, will be, and we separate it from the tares, but at the same time that we'll be able to see this harvest, Lord. That's what we're about. It's about the harvest of the kingdom of God. We're not saying that there's four months in the harvest. We're not saying we need to wait for the harvest, but the harvest is ripe right now. And Lord, not only is it ripe right now, but we need to pray for laborers to go into the fields, Lord. And we not just pray for laborers. We need to be laborers. So we're thankful, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, that, that they would see, Lord, uh, and know, Lord, that as they come into the kingdom, that you would make them righteous. Thank you, Lord, that, again, your plans, the plans that you have for us, the plans that you have for Sojourn Church, Lord, I just see it in the spirit. The plans you have for us, Lord, will not fail. Lord, thank you for the people that you're bringing into our into this house but we're not just wanting them to come into the house we want them to go out and be the church to the unchurched that's our desire for them to go out and be Lord the people of God everywhere they go that they would carry the presence of God the essence of God the love of God the peace of God the joy of the Lord which is our strength that they would go out and people would see that and go what is that it's not a that it's not a it it's a who his name is Jesus and Lord we're thankful Lord that the name of Jesus that we proclaim that people would know it was shot it from the rooftop the name of Jesus be proclaimed over all the earth. And we thank you, Lord, that your kingdom prevails, Lord, above all. You reign. And we're thankful, Lord, that you have plans not only for this church, not only for our leadership. Thank you for our leadership. Thank you, Lord, for our staff, our team, and people that people that you're bringing each week. Lord, thank you for the people, the new people that are coming from the north, south, east, and west. Give them up <laughs> so they can come and be a part. But we're not just thankful for that. We're thankful, Lord, that you are causing these people to become disciples, Lord, and they're following after you. We want them to follow after you, not after just us. And here's what I'm I'm praying. I'm praying that not over us, but Bent Tree, Freedom Life over here in the assembly over here. We're praying, Lord, for Life Church. 
Prestonwood and all these churches that are around us, we pray for them, Lord, that they would have encounters with you, that their services will never be the same because the Spirit of God is upon us and he's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor. And we proclaim it and we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Lord, you're so good. And the plans you have for us individually. I thank you for that. I'm, I'm saying this as we get ready to close. Some of you right now that are praying with us, you have something in your life that you need clarity on. Somebody right now that is listening to this and praying with us, you need uh, just a fresh direction from the Lord. I hear the Lord saying, as you type in the GPS of his word in your life, that he's going to lead and guide you because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. And though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down because the Lord will uphold him with his hand. So I'm telling you today, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean out to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and let him direct your path. So we thank you, Lord, for that and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for our noontime prayer. Don't forget about Wednesday night live that we have for everybody. We got something for the kids. Got something for this youth. We got something for you parents, not just uh, the fellowship and the food afterwards, but also just diving into the word and having a time of worship. So don't miss out. Come and be a part of it. And remember to go out and be the church to the unchurched. Thank you for joining us.